folks, after a stunner of a map one, we are certainly off and to the races down here in Dallas, Texas at the MDL finals. Uh, we've got Vitality squaring off against Sprout, and that was a heck of a map one. Vitality do eventually bail them out. Uh, they take it in overtime, but Sprout, what a match they made of it on their opponent's map pick. Yeah, and it started off so strong as well. I think at one point the scoreline was 12 to 5, maybe even 13 to 5, and then suddenly Vitality starts to creep in a little bit there, and they bring it into overtime. A lot of that off the back of Alex's play with that off. Oh, he yeah. looked fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great way to start it off. That was a, a great first map, but next one coming up is going to be Mirage, and this is Sprout's map pick. So the first one was Vitality's. So they pretty much did what they were supposed to do, but now Sprout is their time to shine. They, they got to get this map, otherwise uh, they're out of it. And this has historically been kind of a weird map between these two rosters. They haven't played it in a while, but the last time they played it, I think, was in April or May, or I think May, during the, the uh, MDL regular season, where Sprout actually took a 16-3 victory over Vitality. Now, admittedly, the last time they played it on LAN, it was a 16-6 in favor of Vitality. So it's kind of hard to read too much information from that. Obviously, online versus LAN environments can make such a difference. We're going to see who gets started here. And based on how much they did on their opponent's map pick, I'm expecting to see a very strong Sprout side. They're going to be going for full armor here, just a decoy to try and get tricky. And it looks like they've boosted a player up into the, uh, into the ninja spot over on B. So that's a wrinkle to keep in mind. That's going to be Alex just tucked up in heavy presence. This might be a bit of a read, but the problem is the bomb and the majority of the players are now moving towards underpass. And there's only going to be NBK they're able to respond. Yeah, Vitality. This is some sort of predictive stack here. They have three guys dedicated towards that B site and one on a quick rotation as well. So it's basically just going to be uh, a retake, they have NBK waiting for that information. Did he spot out that player in towards Connector? Oh, I'm not off. sure he did, but he falls off. And they're able to bypass him for the time being, but he does peek out wide, but he might be in a little bit of trouble. And it's going to be pushed in towards that A side. He's going to try and get away, and he does for the time being. Do they continue to chase? It looks like the answer is no for right now, Mike. Oh, that look at that flash. so fortunate for NBK that he doesn't get taken down. It seemed like he was certainly a goner out in no man's land, and a quick trio of kills out towards CT should just about shut down this retake. Look at this flank as well. Oh. And Searson gets both. They line up for him, and it's a one-two punch. Two taps, two heads found for Searson, and Sprout are on the board. I said I expect them to come out swinging. What a way to do it. They Vitality tried to read them. And then Sprout was like, oh, you're reading the wrong language, guys. We're hitting A. Yeah, we're hitting A. And the, yeah, you can see Vitality was set up for the, some sort of B hit coming in, doing that complete retake situation. NBK just spotting out for info. He got the info, but he had to fall back, wait for, for the cavalry to come in, and it just kind of fell apart from there. So Sprout, get the first round. Let's see what kind of buy we're going to get out of here. We have a Galil AK, the Krieg, and a MAC-10. So actually, every player literally has a, a different gun on their side. I really enjoy the fact in the replays that you get that like slowed down audio. Yeah. <laughs> it just really adds to the experience, I think. Speedy gonna catch the first, following it up as well. Speedy making a little bit of money out here towards mid, but there's just a few too many targets. Fortunately, he's got Big Papa Krieg in the back. Mirbit will make sure that his MAC-10 is not retrievable. Apex and RPK, all that's left. Bomb now planted. This round should be out of their grasp. It's just a question of whether they can do any more damage. Ooh, Ooh. There's the tag. Close. Not the frag, though. Yep. You got to finish that one off. Unfortunately, Faven for Vitality, uh, he lived on 24 HP. So Apex holding market, waiting for a push. I don't think he's going to get it anytime soon unless it's Keto. You can see he's going to be on that AK. Don't want to give that up. And he's actually going to go end up getting that kill. So second round there for Sprout. They did what they were supposed to do in that second round. And looks like the buy will be coming out here for Vitality. No op just yet, as you can imagine. That's a bit of a limiter, though. I mean, you're seeing early on the only person who's who's cracked some heads yet is RPK. Uh, so obviously, these first two rounds hard to predict much of anything off of that. But Searson does have the op up for the German side, and that's a bit of a tough bear to deal with. He was lightning fast in the first map, out towards Fountain in particular. And this time, it looks like he's going to be sitting for this mid push. They're just waiting for this aggression, and Zaiwu is tempted. Zaiwu is thinking about it. He's inching forward. This could be critical. Mirbit already forward in towards the apartments. Once again, a player boosted up into the ninja spot. They've been trying this a couple different times, and RPK will get the first kill, so Apex hasn't had to reveal his position. Speedy's devoting to the same potential angle. He'll find damage, but there's no frag yet. And that's distracting a lot of focus. It's pulled a third defender as well, just in time for Sprout to be setting up for their A hit. Zaiwu has found the, the flank, but the flank may not matter if the bomb site just falls. 
Look at his split. MBK is going to be huge in this round. He's playing solo over towards that A site. You can see the blue dots coming over towards A to come in and help out. But Speedy able to drop the bomb in it on the clock. MBK is going to go down, get spammed through uh, either a smoke or a wall. It's going to be a one man advantage here for Sprout. But the bomb was dropped. It's going to be picked up. Apex is in the area to help out. You can see RPK is over towards Ticket Booth. Alex, meanwhile, able to grab a kill. This is chaotic now. 2v3. Or 3v3, rather. Alex flashed out, but there's a player all the way over towards the B bomb site, so it's two on the site itself. They'll fall into a little bit more passive of angles, but Apex wants to take the fight. He does not want to give up this space, and he's been spotted. Speedy's going to take the fight oh. right to him. Doesn't matter. Apex. Apex gets all three. He's just playing the seesaw going up and down and finding a kill on each entry. So, really nicely done for Apex. And that's a round for Vitality that they very much are happy to get. Huge round for Apex. Had zero kills, now has three, and tied with RPK for the lead on his team right now. So started out first two rounds, go to Sprout. Next one will be Vitality. Will that pattern continue? Vitality tied up here at two, or Sprout able to have a, pretty much a heroic round here? I mean, just considering what they have bought. It's Deagles and uh, there's an armor set on Keto. That is it. Looks like they're going to be spreading throughout the map, so they're not going to do some sort of a waterfall play here. Nothing fast-paced. They're just going to probe for some sort of information, and then you know maybe get a quick pick and play off of that. Faven saving 4,500 is interesting. They definitely want to be able to get that AWP up as often as possible, so they're just not going to risk much financially into this one. MBK once again going to be in the forward spot. He's sort of been playing that position quite a bit. Oh, the that's posted it. up for this. He's waiting for that peak. He's got to get it, but oh, NBK, choose right through him. Make it a double for him, but there's the response with the Glock. It's now 4v3, one man advantage here for Vitality. Keto, I think, has been spotted out. They're shooting in his area. Alex is going to take down Searson. So Mirbin and Keto left. That's just a question of the potential backside. There's the spot. <laughs> and it's instant. It's stereo frags on either side of the map. They find the kills, and it's a second round for Vitality with nary a casualty. NBK, the only one to drop, and he just had an MP9. So that is smooth cruising for the French side. And now they're looking to kick it into another gear against a fully bought up Sprout. They saved. They made sure they'd have as much as they could in this one. The utility's not perfect, but it is good enough, Mitch. This should be a good round for them to get into the action. Yep, Zywo is going to be on that op. Searson on the op. He's going in towards mid. I think he's going to be flashing in his teammate. Speedy going to be the first man up. Oh, that's one kill. Should be able to grab a second here, and it's going to work out. There's a four-man set dedicated towards mid, and both kills go in the favor of Sprout. Not what Vitality wanted at all. Already down two men, so Sprout, really good start here. They just did not anticipate that utility usage from Sprout, and it was perfectly done. The flash was beautiful, and that's what secured them. A couple of frags, so that's a big way to get started here for the German side, and they are looking to continue this momentum straight onto the B-bomb site. It will be Alex who's got to hold on. We saw him be a monster with the AWP over on Overpass. This time he's just got an AUG, and he's getting aggressive with it. Does find the first pick, and he can fade away without being punished. So that's a big kill to bring back, and that might allow some space as well. You can see Searson and Speedy are both low. Alex has been tagged, but that's okay. The problem is now they're hedging their bets towards A, anticipating that having felt that presence of B, they might rotate, and Sprout well, has nothing to do with that. They're going to hit B regardless. They say, you know what? Sure. We felt a little bit of presence. There's one guy there. We can deal with one guy. Yeah, so there's going to be a free bomb site here for Sprout, unless something happens quickly here for Vitality. They should be just be able to walk in here without any sort of resistance. So 35 seconds on the clock. Bomb will be planted momentarily. Now, does Vitality go for retake in the situation, or is this round already written off? I mean, there's been utility spent over towards that B site, but we haven't seen any movement from Vitality just yet. So Bomb's been planted. Now we should have a signal whether or not they're going to go for it, and I think we know now it's going to be a, a save here, Mike. Yeah, they, they bluffed. They pulled a big bluff. They said, all right, we showed one player towards B. Now we rotate everyone A, and if it's an A hit, we're ready to deal with them. But unfortunately, Sprout called their bluff. And so the cards are now down on the table. And Vitality says, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and fold. Yeah, I mean, as well as uh, Alex is playing, playing on uh, op, if you're able to save him or save the gun for him in the, the next round, I'm, I'm with him, especially when you're down around and you're all the way across the map. So smart play here by Vitality, but they will give up around here to Sprout, who will take the lead, make it 3-2. to two. And the bomb will, be, will explode. And now Sprout officially in the lead. But there will be an op. M4 and an AUG brought into this next round, and Vitality will be able to buy across the board for everybody. It just depends on 
How much utility did he get? And I think they will be able to get pretty much everything they want in the situation. Speedy, that was beautiful. The flash from Searson really sets it up, and Speedy just knocks him down. That's the, the yeah. one-two punch. Really nicely played from Sprout. They, they anticipated what Vitality wanted to do, and they were just ready for it. Perfect counterplay. Yeah, beautiful work. Nice conversion off that flash and just kind of fell apart for Vitality. So Alex is really? going to go for more. He's going to go with the AUG this time, and he's able to grab a kill. He's taking down 18 HP. Can he get away? Nade won't take him down. He'll be able to avoid that molly, so he waits it out. He falls back, and Alex some way makes his, somehow makes his way out. He's going back for more. He picks up the AWP, and he's going to kill with that. Okay. Alex is a, is a primary AWP now. Zaibu actually goes into that angle to, to take the same fight Alex did. Loses his life. Alex says, all right, let me show you how it's done. Picks up the AWP <laughs> himself and gets it. So nicely done from Alex. Once again, we're seeing really strong form out from him individually. And that is sometimes the X factor for this Vitality team. Sometimes, you know, if you have that, that player who's normally in a more supportive role just fragging out, that can really be a tipping point uh, for the game. So Sprout, you see they're stunned. They're just slower to react. They wanted this early mid presence and frankly with one player racing out mid that should have been a frag. Alex somehow pulls the escape artist routine and now he's still a threat. So they're going to regroup towards A. This seems to be the fallback most of the time is go for this A hit. The two players ready and waiting though. Yeah, here comes the smoke set over towards A. I assume it'll be the traditional smokes that we see. Blocks off CT, stairs and jungle. See both of those smokes going to be going over to the right side and it looks like Apex wants to fight this, but goes on the other side of the smoke, and Mirbit clearly waiting with the Krieg. MBK ready to pounce. They're going to try to clear him out. The Molly comes in just as time, and he's not looking the right way. MBK has gone down, so that's Alex and RPK left. Alex desperately trying to see on the other side of that smoke. He's now out in the open. He's going to continue to push, but none of the players are on the left side, Alex. And here comes Speedy trying to wait for that push. He's able to grab one, but no, RPK wins that fight. It's Alex versus two. Look at the health, though. A single Molotov would end them. Fortunately, there's none available for the T side. It's just going to be guns that have to do it, but they'll be so vulnerable to the spray if they go for the defuse. This is so very risky. One stray bullet could end it all, and they're hoping that a misplay will come in from Sprout instead. Both players are in towards CT. The second smoke will go down, and now RPK just happening? has to hop on it. They're distracted. They've lost focus. But just at the last second, Faven gets it. And that'll be another round secured for Sprout. It was nearly done. Nearly stolen away by RPK. But he hits a rut. That was close. And the fact that they had that second smoke, I didn't even notice they had the extra one there. So I saw the initial smoke fading. I was like, okay, uh, what's going on here? Might as well try to use that smoke while you can. But then another one pops out. But uh, nice job there by Favana. Gra grab those last two kills. So Sprout now have four rounds, make it four to two. That's going to send Vitality back. Two pistols in the situation have a little bit of utility, but really not all that much to work with. So we've seen them do a couple plays in towards mid, but they haven't really worked out that well, so it looks like you're going to abort on that idea for the time being. I imagine they'll come back to it later, but right now, since it's pistols, actually, they're going to go back to mid here. They got two guys cat, two connector, Keto handles one, and CTs look like they're going to book it out of there. That's funny. So from Sprout, that's this what they've been doing a lot of these early rounds is they've been going for that sort of firing range in mid just to see what vitality you're going to do because there's been a lot of aggression in towards mid and it's like all right let's just try and get some picks let's see if they'll they'll deliver us some kills in this round everybody else just hold and then after that initial engagement it's like all right now let's do what we were planning to do looks like it's just going to be a pretty vanilla a take smokes over sight take nobody's home to resist this is a lost round almost certainly vitality is just going to be trying to get in from the edges to do a little bit of damage if they can and these pistols might be grimy but it should be relatively secure for sprout Problem is oh. now everybody's here. <laughs> everybody's here from Vitality. They've had enough time to rotate in. Yeah, Zaiwu had a bunch of chunk damage done to him through that smoke. Flash is going to come in. That's when they peek. But do they spot out Zaiwu? They do eventually. Keto able to grab one. Faven will add one as well. So 4v2. And Alex going to be the last man standing. Tries to grab one more out of the air. Doesn't hit it. Mirbit finishes him off. It's going to be 5 to 2 for Sprout. But. We saw the story before in the first matchup. Sprout started off really well. Vitality was able to bring it back in. But right now, Sprout's doing exactly what they need to do. They are, and this time they're on the T side to start off. Remember, last time they were on the favorite side, and they wound up uh, getting that, uh, that double-digit scoreline in the first half, and then it sort of fell apart from them in the second. Look at that beautiful can. Oh, the that's beautiful. Grip. I actually had some of that today. It was fantastic. I, I'm thinking about it now. That is really appealing. Uh, normally, I'm a, I'm a, you know caffeination in the afternoon kind of guy, but that, that looks nice. Speedy. 
Going to be taking a little bit of control in towards mid. And this has been kind of a grave for Vitality round after round. So this time you're seeing a much more passive hold. They don't want to get aggressive in towards mid. That's going to allow so much space for Speedy to just work his way into. Apex might be able to catch him, but the smoke will confirm that there's a player on towards Cat, and Speedy can exploit that knowledge. Nobody's home. This is so much room to rumble. Do they know there's a player in connector? They have to be aware of the possibility. Alex has to watch for this, but he's just tucked watching on the ladder because he knows someone could have gotten in there as well. Does Speedy check this? No! Uh. Backstab for Alex if Speedy had checked that. That might have been the round. But as it is, this hold should be good for Vitality now. They've got to do so much more work, and Apex is following it up. Alex Gold again gets one before he's silenced. The kills are being traded out, though. Searson's op rings twice. And both are death knells for his opponents. And there's going to be a third oh. as well. Searson taking this round by the throat and trying to escort it through. It's just going to be Zaiwu, the young phenom, to find it. And 40 seconds on the clock means Sprout can just bail out, reset, and figure out where they want to go. Yeah, I like this idea. They don't have co to commit to B in this situation. It looks like they're going to, but I mean, they're basically just letting Zaiwu try and figure out and maybe hedge its bets. Or actually, he would have to commit to one of these sites. But right now, he's sticking in towards mid. And has vision on towards A, but the real play is on towards that B side. So the bomb will be planted here momentarily. 15 seconds left on the clock. And now Zaiwu versus two. Can he bring this one back? It's going to be tough, especially with that AWP. Does he want to go for it? No, he's going to save. He's going to save. He's going to take the conservative play here. Vitality uh, not quite going to just go for the, the star play. And especially with the AWP, he does want to keep that gun alive and yep. give them a chance to make it have impact in the next round. So another round for Sprout. Now six rounds on T-side Mirage right off the bat. They have come out the gate swinging. And that round really was up to Searson. Searson, the star player uh, in that particular round, just brings it back from a deficit and makes it happen for the German side. And th this is a Sprout reformed. I mean, this is really a Sprout that came to play, that did their homework, that was ready for the looks that they're going to see. And this was, when we talked about it, it, it's they've had more time to prep for this matchup. And I think we're seeing the fruits of that labor in the way they're playing in server. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see that they're doing a really good job controlling mid uh, up to this point. They've had a lot of success there. I mean, they're up 6-2 right now against, a, you know, the number two team in the world right now in yeah. Vitality. So they got to be feeling themselves. Obviously, the, the first map, the weight ended not the way you want it to. But... Uh, I mean, it was Vitality's map pick, so not a huge deal. They just got to make sure you refocus, get back into this one. And right now, they're doing uh, just what they need to do. Now, currently up four rounds. It looks like there was a timeout momentarily, but looks like we're going to get back into the action. Full buy for Sprout, as you can imagine, and it's only going to be Zywu with a gun on his side. He'll be on that op with armor, and then a little bit of utility as well. Stared deep into his eyes. The eyes of a frat. <laughs> right those, uh, those, those baby blues right there. Yeah. Just transfixing the camera. So this is maybe a bit of a calm moment for a Vitality. We saw it come through on overpass a couple times where the coach calmed them down, talked to them a little bit, and got them uh, got their heads on right. It was a bit of a change. Now it's just Zaibu who can really have major impact in this. Otherwise, it's going to be up to the Deagles to do the work, and that's a bit more of a challenge. Looks like it's going to be a straight A hit, and APK is the only NBK is the only one close up. His teammates have to get back in. The smoke segment them off. They're going to go through it, oh. but NBK hits the first. He's looking for the second as well. NBK, the damage done. The kill found. He's holding strong with just a Deagle. He's lost a couple of teammates, though, but he's made this possible for the squad, and Zaiwu's off is still a threat. It's still lurking. Repositioning now towards CT. The bomb is down. It has to be recovered, and it's just Faven and Searson to try and find this through. Make that just Searson as Alex's dig rings out. The Deagles doing all the work. Who needs the op when you got the hand cannon instead? Nice job there by NBK grabbing a double. Struggled a little bit with a few of those bullets, but eventually did get the job done. And he was traded out, but he did his job. So a minute on the clock. Searson left the go alone versus three. Bomb still hasn't been picked up here, but I imagine... Once he comes around this corner, there's going to be a couple crosshairs on his position. But it's actually going to be Vitality going for the offensive play in that situation. Flash in, and it's going to work out. Searson doesn't get a single kill in that situation. So Vitality earned their third. It's now 6-3. to three. What a swing round as well. Now you've got the double op retrieved and available. You've got an AK picked up as well. They came into that just with the op of Zaiwu, and everybody else made that happen. So now... They've got the potential to run some back. There's still money available for the Sprout side, but this may be the end of the rope. You see a UMP come out for Speedy. 
They're going to need to find a little bit of space and answer back, if you will. But that is definitely a lifeline for Vitality. The French side have gained some space, and Zaiwu's going to get aggressive as a result. He's flashed out, though. They're looking for him. He gets tagged down and has to fade away. So the initial aggression is kind of won by Sprout. It's not major either way. And Apex is here as well. Searson reads him, has the shot. That's the double up out. Only the single available. And the initial pick does not work for Vitality. Yeah, nice job there uh, by Sprout. It's going to lead to Apex's death, but the op will be picked up, so Alex and Zaiwu both have one now. But Keo in towards Connector. There's a man right around this corner. Is he going to spot him out? Then the answer is yes. Alex is going to get a kill with the Deeg. Doesn't need the op in that situation. So we're even up now 4v4. Minute on the clock. It looked like Searson wanted to go. Grab the bomb. It looks like he's going to do that, but where did they decide to go? There's still a guy in Palace, and there's still a guy in towards Apartments, in towards B, but Speedy, big kill there on MBK. Now, once again, an advantage. And now they can really start to squeeze on towards Alex, who's falling oh, back by Tech Booth. He's just fading out of there. Well, he, he doesn't want anything to do with it, right? Because if he lost his life in that initial pick, this retake would be nigh on impossible. He's got no one there to support. They're going to work a lurk in towards the apartments, and dropping Alex out towards CT makes this very viable indeed. RPK's got to come back, but his teammate is so far away. Zaiwu, though, can have something to say about it from the connector. Now they know exactly where he's coming from, and a flank will be on its way. Zaiwu has to get aggressive. He puts on his sneakers. He's running for it. He misses the shot, and Faven will have him instead. So all shut down. Sprout retake momentum. They've got a seventh on the board as well. Already a solid half year, and they're looking to tack on more that's a heartbreaker of a round for Vitality. Yeah, Zaiwu had that one lined up as well, but just uh, I think I led a little bit too much on that left side. He's still having a rough game. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's not two at six. Definitely not a scoreline you see too often. Apex as well, not having a, a great one. He's at four and seven. Alex leading the way, and significantly as well. He's double, I think, anybody else on his team right now. So he will be on that AUG. It's going to be SMGs for a couple of other guys. So Vitality going for it in this round, and they're going to get punished for that mid push. Again, Searson ready for that connector push right on the other side of that smoke, but they don't give him that kill. But right now, one man advantage here for Sprout, and they're going to slow it down. So yeah, I mean, Sprout has been the kings of mid. Up They've to just point. planted a flag. They have planted a flag, and it's like, anytime you come here, you've got to deal with us. You're going to have to take a pick. You're going to have to take a fight. And Vitality just haven't been winning it. Even when they survive the initial mid engagement, they're like isolated, stranded, blown apart. Their their setups have just not been holding strong in towards Mirage mid. So Sprout seem to have found the magic formula to exploit their mid plays. And this is really looking bad for Vitality. Uh, once you give mid to the T's round after round, there's just so much they can do with it. This aggression from MBK, though, could be the answer. He's taking ramp control. They should be aware this is a possibility, though. And you can see based on how patiently Faven's playing, he's anticipating it. Doesn't matter. MBK has the headshots. And MP9, that close up, will work very nicely for him. He will be traded. But that's info and damage done. And considering the weapon he had, it's not a bad result. Yeah, Speedy going to get aggressive in towards Cat. There's a man right around the corner, but Searson will do the job. Speedy going to continue to push, but RPK waiting to peek out here. And they avoid each other for the time being. Zaiwu on the way towards B, but no, he's actually going to come towards A. Not sure he knows what he wants to do just yet, but he's watching that cross. There's two guys coming out of connector, able to grab the initial kill, but he's mollied out. Does he know how close it is? And oh, look out. He's starting to take damage now down to 44, and he is hemmed in here, Mike. Pretty low. Speedy able to grab one. Another man right around the corner. RPK gets that kill now. 2v1. He's fortunate that Molly didn't spread to finish him. He would have had no idea blinded up as he was. RPK in a 1v2 has to do it. He's confirmed his position if they didn't already know. And now he's going to try and get back on towards the site. But there's no reason to take the faces. They can be patient. And that sets up Mirbit for the swing. Here's him stomping about and finds the timing as well. Sprout now with an eighth round. And they are just playing Vitality like a fiddle. They are controlling the presence from Vitality beautifully. It feels like anytime they're taking a site, Vitality is trying to rotate to the other one at the wrong moment. It's it's almost like Vitality's boxing at shadows, and Sprout are just casting those shadow puppets on the wall. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, starting off with mid, just they've won that almost every single time. And a lot of the, the rounds have fallen apart because of how well Sprout's played in towards mid, getting two kills to start off. But looks like we're going to get a little bit of fast action in towards mid, as we've talked about a few times. You can see Apex wants to do a little bit of something about this, but he's gotten in towards a lower, something I don't think we've seen just yet. So Alex going to smoke up in towards window. I assume that's a one-way, but I'm not entirely sure. 
Uh, there we go. Apex able to pop out a lower. Gets that opening kill on Mirbit. That's something we haven't really seen too much yet is that early advantage for Vitality. That's nice to see. It's going to be a tough round for them regardless, but now they've at least got a Krieg to work with, and it's on one of their only armored players. Alex gets silenced, though, so the trade does go back. Still, Vitality would say they're better off before that than be they were before that trade, having the one rifle to work with. It's going to be... Presence taken once again. Mid is the domain of Sprout. They've had it. This time there's just pistols to try and contend. That's just not enough. Keto can work his way into the ladder room. A tricky spot indeed. And they're slowly clearing their path towards B. Just going to be Apex, who does have that one rifle. But if he gets traded here, the round should be out of control. He's found the first. Can he get the second as well? I think he's spotted. Oh. Nicely done from Searson to salvage and make sure it wasn't going to all fall apart there. Now the bodies are dropping. They're trying to get back through. This bomb should be planted, and the long flank has to come all the way from a NBK in towards T-spawn. RPK is kind of on his own here, and he's on his own to a solemn lonely death. Yeah, if I'm RBK, I'm making that same play. I kind of try to do something about that bomb plan or maybe trying to get a kill and then pick up a rifle to really flip that round around. You can't really wait for your teammate in this situation when you only got pistols. So it's going to be another round for Sprout. One away from double digits for them. We saw that in the first map, though. And we know how that story went. But still, Sprout playing really well here. Just looking at the leaderboard for them. It's Searson leading the way. I mean, we called out his name a lot. So it's not surprising, but Speedy on 11, Faven on 11. On the flip side, only one person above double digits, and that's Alex on 11. Do you think that if... I know this is very early days, there's a lot more CS to be played, but do you think if Sprout made Pro League, they changed the name to Tree? <laughs> I gonna, hope they do. Sai was going to trim beautiful. that tree in this round early on. <laughs> Finally, a mid-pick goes the way of Vitality. They get the early aggression, they find it, and they don't need to contest now. Finally, Sprout's been put on notice, but Zaiwu's gonna go back for more. He finds the second as well. This is the Zaiwu we wanted to see in this game. Searson will chime back, but look at the health on two of his teammates. It's so very low. They're looking for more. They're looking to find something. And Alex is right underneath. The smoke's fading. He's tucked in the oh sandwich. My God. The double take. Alex checks it. Searson drops on his head and is doing all the work. But now he's been silenced and it's left to Keto with 11 HP and a 1v2. Minute on the clock. What a wild exchange there. Searson able to pop down, get what I assume is a no scope. It's going to be Keto on 11 HP. So 2v1. This is a tough situation for Keto. You can see one guy in towards ramp. And Apex is waiting in that area. Zaiwu watching the cross. 40 seconds left on the clock. And here we go. They're going to try to get that bomb down. Apex going to pop out and will get that kill. And that's going to be around for Vitality. First one in a while, I feel like. And it's going to be 9-4. to four. And you know, the difference maker there was Zaiwu was the Zaiwu we expect. He gets the opening kill. He goes back for a second as well. And that's really what Vitality needs to be functioning here. That play was so hot. It's apparently setting off alarms in the building right now. And we're going to hey, see... And we cast can... right through it, baby. We Fire alarm's right not going to stop us. We'll see if they can keep the heat going as we ascertain what's going to happen here. Players discussing. They've of course got the, the noise canceling headphones, so they don't they don't care. They can't hear that. Do you think that was Vitality that pulled it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the, the heat off of that initial op pick might have just triggered the system. Yeah, I'm with you. That was uh that was nice. But uh yeah, I mean this is good been a good matchup here so far for Sprout here on the second map. One away from double digits, but I think we're gonna have to wait here for a minute to uh watch the rest of this play out. I gotta say, yes. you, you know what I think? One of the interesting note. I don't think I've seen a smile cracked on that sprout side. Dude, all business. This Cold blooded all business. Man. Absolutely. There, there we yeah. go. There <laughs> right we as go. We request it. There's we call the it out. We see a big old smile. There you go. There's a little bit of joy. Only one of them though. We'll work on the other four. <laughs> gotta have it. Gotta have a little Thanks, bit. Thanks, bud. So we got a we got a little bit of mirth there as we figure out what exactly is going on. We're gonna be hopping back into the server. It seems freeze time is expiring. And it's gonna be an op for both sides. Searson, of course, picking it up for the German squad. It's gonna be very limited though. They've already got nine rounds on Mirage on T side of Mirage. This is already a fantastic half. If they can put a double digits here, that's gravy. I mean, that's the gravy on top. Yeah, you de you're definitely satisfied with nine rounds in the situation. But here in this round, in the 14th, it's going to be MBK getting that opening kill. Mirbit trying to catch RPK over towards bench, but RPK is going to reposition. Flash has come in. Mirbit doesn't push off of that. I thought that's what he was going to be doing. He's going to stick in towards apartments for the time being, but here comes the push, and the remainder of the T is going to come in and try to get this bomb down. RPK on site has to... 
be the turret, but he's got Apex supporting from the market. He's actually caught out, but Apex was going to say he's still alive, but he's quickly dug out in return. And now there's a player working his own way oh, in the market. No way. Aggressive for Faven. Zaiwu predicts it. And now it's just Searson, who has been lights out all game long, all series long, rather. But this is a tall ask, and Zaiwu will read his position and find the shot instead. So a fifth round for Vitality. They're bringing this back. If it's a 9-6, it's not that bad. It's still a great half for Sprout. But we saw this in the first map, where right at the end, it looked like it was disastrous for Vitality, and they started to bring back a couple rounds right at the end, and that gave them life moving forward. Yeah, I think, uh, what was the last two rounds of uh, the last map, I think, before they switched over to this next side? So yeah, Vitality, you know, they can get that momentum, kind of mirror what they did in that first map. That would be huge for them here on the second. And just a reminder for people that just joined, Vitality did win that first map on Overpass in overtime. They cleaned house and uh, won all four rounds in overtime. So here we are. Vitality could put this away, but a lot of a lot more CS to be played. Apex gets himself a nice pick. There's a follow-up as well. This round's looking good for them to shut down the possibility. It's just going to be Keto 1v5 with the Deagle. This would be a miracle. And he only gets one uh, before Apex says, no miracles in this building or right now. I'm shutting it down. 9-6. to six is the half. That's still very strong for Sprout, especially considering they started on the slightly less favorable T side. Very strong indeed. Yeah, they got to be satisfied with that. But if you're Vitality, you, you snag, snagged a couple rounds there towards the end, going to make it a little bit closer here. Didn't give up that, that double-digit number that might have, you know, has a little bit of uh, kind of messes with you a little bit once you hit that number. It's like, oh, they got double digits going in the second half. Uh, but they didn't give it up. So, yeah, as you mentioned, now 9-6. to six. Just got to wait for these guys to ready up to get back into this action. And uh, yeah, we got a good map so far. We certainly do. Now, of course, if we get past this, it's on to Dust 2, which is a very good map. I mean, both sides love to play it. Very good map for Vitality, though. Yep. So Sprout has a lot of work cut out for them, even after this first great half. They've got to close this half out, and even then, they're not out of the woods. Vitality, meanwhile, would very much like to shut this down at 2-0, confirm their spot forward, and make it happen. It's going to be tough sledding, though. Reminder, folks, these two teams are competing for a spot in the Pro League. This would be direct promotion without having to play the relegation tournament, so there's a lot on the line. You can see the tension knit on the coach's face there. They know how much this game and this series means. Absolutely. So, not entirely sure what's going on here. I assume we'll be getting started momentarily, but I guess we can take a look at the, the leaderboard while we have a moment. You can see Apex leading the way. On 13 kills, tied up with Alex as well, who's had a fantastic night. He actually started off really slowly, but really gotten back into it. On the flip side, it's going to be Faven and Speedy leading the way. We can go ahead and check out the ADR. Speedy on 103, followed by 94 on Searson. And then Apex leading the way with 92. He's pretty significantly ahead of the rest of his team as well. He's doing well. Alex is, is still nutty. Still Effective flashes, 18 and 18 on uh, Zaiwu and NBK, and then there's one on RBK. <laughs> so Zaiwu is the support player on this map right now. Yeah. He's flashing for his teammates. It's working out nicely, though. Uh, very nicely. So maybe a little bit of a response to the fragging pace, I think, is what our observer's trying to indicate to us right now. You all can't see that. Of course, you're just seeing slightly deflated faces on stage. This is not the joyous vitality that we were seeing earlier. Yeah, look at the utility... Utility damage on NBK, 103. So it looks like what's happening here is that we, we had a bit of a fire alarm in the building. It's a false <laughs> fire alarm, we believe, but it still needs to be investigated to make sure that there's nothing going awry here. Uh, so the match is just being held a little bit, folks. So that's what's going on here. Everybody just wants to get underway. Obviously, these players, I mean, this is like you're, you're all ready to go, right? You're, the momentum is flowing. The blood's pumping. You're in max fragging mode, and then all of a sudden... Fire just gotta line. get stopped at the gates. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, unlucky, but I think basically we just have to make sure we cover all of our liability here. We don't want any Certainly. issues like that. So we do have to pause safe. it, but you can hear a little bit of typing going on. Typically, that signals uh, we're going to be starting up soon, but it could just be them chatting, you know, talking about, hey, you guys enjoying yourselves? How do you like that barbecue? Yeah, you guys had uh, the barbecue yet? I'm very excited to get some good barbecue down yes, here. Yes, we had some excellent ramen last night. Which is, you come to Dallas, Texas and eat ramen. Yeah, so of all things, know. yeah. I, uh, I came to Dallas, and I assumed I was going to be getting uh, barbecue first, but the place was closed, so we go to a ramen place, and it ended up the best ramen I've ever had. Really? Coming to Texas. That good. Yeah, it was, it was great. We went for burgers instead. And that we've been to that place before. That it place fantastic. is very solid. Yeah, it was great. Very solid. Yeah, I got some spicy ramen. Great start.
Great start to the week. All right. Well, he's all fueled up. Now we uh, just figuring out what's going on here. Maybe that spicy ramen is what triggered the fire alarm. You were just a little too hot, a <laughs> little too heated today. <laughs> A little too heated. It is interesting that on this map, Zaiwu has not managed to have the impact we typically expect. There were a couple rounds where you saw the flashes where it's like, okay, yeah, this is this is what we're hoping for. But really, it's been up to Alex and, Ape and, uh, and Apex to have that ridiculous impact. And Alex has been, once again, picking up a lot of the burden. He's been shouldering the load in terms of fragging output, both at the tail end of Overpass last map and going into this one as well. So... Big moves for him. Big uh, fragging as well. And, and that's just uh, important to see. He can, I mean, we talked about it. When you're losing maybe the luster from a star player, maybe they're not having as great of a map or they're just not starting out hot, uh, you can have that uh, another player, a player you maybe don't expect, pick up the load and, and really shine. Yeah. And that's what Alex is doing. Absolutely. And it's good that they're not highly dependent on Zai Wu uh, in this map. I mean, they're, it's glad that the, it's good that other people are able to step up in this situation. And that's not the guy you'd normally think of when Alex fragging out like that, when he got, you know, NBK, Apex, RPK, and Zai Wu as teammates. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's been p playing fantastic, and that enables Zaiwu to not have that insane map that he seems seemingly always does, and they're only down three rounds. I think we're back into it, so we should be kicking off the second half here. It's funny, it has been a criticism of Vitality before that they are very dependent uh, sometimes on that start play. So it's good to see a little bit of, a little bit of depth come out from them. I'm sure Zaiwu is happy about that, too. You know, He, he yeah. doesn't have to have a, a miracle map every time to... Uh, Get a W. Heavy presence on the CT side on the A bomb site itself. And meanwhile, all of Vitality stacked up towards mid with one player and towards the apartments. So now they are going to take mid. They're making a lot of noise, but they could just go down underpass. And it does seem like underpass is the play. It's a full retake on B, which is the, about the opposite of the way you've been seeing most teams play this map. Oh, as I say that, it's a little bit of a sleight of hand. Vitality, they're just running like a murder snake around, occasionally leaving players. So they run four players in the mid just to leave one player in mid. They've still got the player in apartments. They go back up underpass and all the way back around to the top of mid. And now it looks like they want to approach B from cat. The double bamboozle, Mike. Here we go. Searson going to get the opening kill there on NBK. Mirbit watching that cross. Searson able to grab another one. So that's two men that have been lost trying to get in towards that B site. Mirbit trying to take this fight. He's got to be cognizant of Alex swinging, and Alex gets the kill. So now 4v3. Faven going to have a guy in his face, but RPK wins the fight. Vitality looking good here. The bomb has been planted. Retake coming in, Mike. This is tough. Such good early shots from Searson, but the problem is it falls apart on the entry into the site. The overwhelming numbers from Vitality just working out and Ooh. now Searson getting caught in the apartments makes this tough indeed they're both coming in from the same angle speedy at the very least has the kit so that buys them a little bit more time but they've got to hit the shots it's just on keto he can't do it Zaiwu holds strong the whole squad on B just locks it down and gets a seventh round on the board and once again I think there were two kills in that round three maybe even for Alex three kills so three. Alex again continuing his pace this time with the pistols and it's a seventh for Vitality and now the gap has really shrunk between them and their opponents Yep, Alex certainly looking good at a plus seven right now, and that was a huge pistol round for Vitality, letting them get back into this one. The assumption coming into this is that Vitality is able to handle this next round coming up, only pistols for the most part on the side of Sprout, but you can see Searson is on that scout, so if that were to change around around, it would be him having impact with the scout, but immediately dismissed by Apex, wide peaks in towards mid and no chance, but the scout has been picked up here by Pavent. He'll try his hand at, it, at this one. Let's see where they're moving. Alex going to get a follow-up. This is the B-bomb site. The door's blown wide open. Welcome mat laid down, and they are rolling right on in. They haven't even bothered to wipe their shoes. They're just moving straight onto the site. Speedy will get a counter frag. The problem is there's a player at their heels. It's Apex coming in from the murder hole, and there's just no chance for escape. So they are neutralized. They are set down, and it is an eighth round for Vitality with four alive as well, which is a nice little bonus for that bank, keeping those players up. And Sprout are now going to have to go ahead and take the bitter eco. So one away from being tied up. Vitality winning the pistol, doing what they were supposed to in the following round. And now let's see what we got here on both sides. So it's going to be a save on the side of Sprout. As you can imagine, you look at their money. Searson was the only one that could really bind the situation. But he's just going to grab a flash. And on the flip side, it's going to be two AKs, Galil, MAC-10, and an ump. And the focus right now for Vitality is on towards that A site. And they're just going to walk in dry. No flashes, no nothing. They're just going to walk in. And they are going to be welcomed here by Kido, who does a little bit of chip damage. But clearly, you want to get that kill in that situation. That's when you had the jump on them. And you're going to pay. Zaiwu takes him down with the ump. 
Interesting, the bomb's pushing in towards CT. That would have been a potential vulnerability if Searson had managed to strike, but they slip away. I think the heal was poking out. Searson nearly gets him, but just can't quite put out the right amount of damage with the UMP, or the USP, rather, and gets answered back by the SMG of that name instead. It's going to be the bomb site fallen in full post-plant position with just two USPs on the flanks. This is an easy round for Vitality, and this is interesting because we're going to be running into the first gun round with a 9-9 tie-up. It's really anyone's game here. Apex knows where Speedy is. Speedy, <laughs> he's got your favorite gun, Mike. The, the Zeus in towards that. the ladder. And Speedy going to push, but Apex from below with the MAC-10 will take his head off. And we are tied up here on the second map. It's 9-9. Nine to nine. Alex is going to hold on to that Zeus. And, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of magic with that later on in this round. Maybe. I'd be surprised. I, I appreciate the attempt from Speedy, though. He was trying to bait them into attacking his position and was actually really well set up for the Zeus if it did, in fact, happen. Now it's going to be the full gun round. They've got slightly bigger guns than the Taser. Uh, they're going to be able, and you see the Zeus gets popped and spawned. They don't want uh, to No it. fun. Vitality wants no fun. <laughs> they're all business, no fun. They're going to keep the MAC-10 up, though, so that's a potential Achilles heel here. The fortunate thing is on the T side, you can just let it play aggressive, and it looks like Alex just wants to make some noise towards B with that chatterbox of a gun. Meanwhile, the rest of his team start to group up in towards Palace, so presumably this is potentially the wrap from Underpass. But Searson, I think, is watching for exactly this play. It's a good amount of info for Speedy in towards mid, but he he's not going to have the full story until he continues to push up towards top mid, but that's kind of risky. Looks like a B hit, or B fake is going to come up here. Perfect timing on that flash. Mirbit can't respond. He's going to have to abort there, but the real hit will begin. Again, going to smoke himself out. MBK able to take him down, though, and the A site has fallen. And they don't overextend. They don't go towards the further box. Searson will eventually catch a player, but that's allowed Zaiwu to get on top of mid, and if he can hold this position, it'd be vital. Can't stay alive for long, though. Molly will force them back from connector. Searson wants to get in position, loses a little bit of health as the exchange, but that's a worthy price as far as he's concerned. Now they've worked two players up into Palace. There's not a lot of utility, though. They're just going to have to fight this out, and Alex still just has a MAC-10, and he's stuck in Palace, so there's no real chance for him to get out. Only a kid on Keto. Oh, Here we this. go. Apex going to try to spray him down with the Galil, able to grab one. Searson trades it out. NBK grabs a double, and it's now Mirbit. Versus two, time is ticked away. No chance is what you got. It's gonna explode. Nobody gonna live through the round and Vitality have the lead again. It's now 10 to nine, Mike. They have wiped the board clean. That's a cleansing round right there. They've got the momentum. They should be fine for money. They've set an eco for Sprout as well, and now they can start to get away from it. They can start to race ahead. And we're seeing this again, a tale of two halves out from Sprout, starting out so very well, and then just losing steam towards the end of the half, and now just starting to run on dry in the second. Can they rally? This time they do not have, or they did not have the cushion that they did in the first game. And this could be a catastrophe. So whatever their answer is going to be, they're going to need to find it quick. But this is unlikely to be the round where they do so. It's just going to be pistols available. This is going to be a tough one indeed. And you can see Vitality slowly taking mid control. Haven't even committed the bomb yet. But Zaiwu will find the first. He won't wait for that Molly. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't even worry about trying to flush him out. He just gets that kill and... Uh Molly won't have to do any work in that situation. So it looks like you're going to push in towards Palace. MBK ready and waiting. He'll take advantage of that first kill. But no, nice shot there by Favent. Takes down MBK. Earns himself an AK. But he's left on one HP. So if you're MBK, you're a little uh, sad about that. Obviously, you don't know he's on one HP. But nonetheless, you definitely would like to get that kill. So now 4v3 technically, but Favent on one HP. Yeah. Tough. He's got the AK at least. It's a silver line. You got that going for him, yeah. He gets one bullet out. The hero AK. He's better hit that one tap. Pray to his altar of scream. Yeah. <laughs> better hit that one tap. Absolutely. But otherwise, you are done, though. They should have a pretty good idea of where he could be as well. So it's going to be a take on towards A. Presumably somebody's watching that palace play, although that molly would have been enough. He's going to go ahead and fade back. Faven playing this very passive. And that's a big oh. pick to find for Keto. That makes it possible. Now the rifle could be retrieved. He goes straight in with the deagle, and he gets the tag, but it's not a headshot. So now it's going to be left to Mirabit and Keto. And Keto, it seems like he wants nothing to do with it. I think Keto's just saving the AK. So they're just looking for guns at this point. We'll see if Mirbit can work his way into mid and maybe grab that fallen rifle. Uh, it's possible. He's not going to go for it. He's just going to keep his armor up. 
conservative yeah. call. Not a terrible one. Maybe he's going to wait right here, wait for the ball and to blow the rifle just slightly closer to him and then swing and get it. That's what I'm thinking, too. Yeah. Uh, he's got 100 HP, so we can deal with a good amount of blast radius in this situation. I don't know how much damage he would do here. I don't even think he would take any from that position. But, yeah, you can see he's ready and waiting. Number one, probably trying to get exit kills, but also, as you mentioned, the goal is to get a, a rifle here if possible. But he isn't going to be able to take anybody down. The bomb, unless it's Iwoo. Okay, yeah, he's, he's plenty uh, plenty far away. Can you get it? It's going to be... Nope. Nope, no gun. He doesn't even go out of underpass. He's just tucked. He's very conservative. Keeps the armor up. And they can buy here. It's not a big problem. Yeah. Right? He's just trying to keep what little advantage he already has uh, available, and there's no problem there. The vitality story right now is they're up two rounds, Mike. 11 to 9. Sprout was up, uh, what, 9 to 6 and a half? And... Uh, we're looking even better before that as well, because Vitality grabbed a few rounds there towards the end. So Vitality, again, flipping the script on them. Yeah, this is seven seven rounds in a row. No, five rounds in a row now, rather. But they, you're right. They had the, the, the rounds on the end of the half, so it may actually be more like eight. It's looking very good for the French side now. Uh, we're going to see the op come out, and actually the double op as well. We haven't really seen this yet out from the Germans. Uh, so Faven, going to be a bit of a new wrinkle here. And we'll see if they can anticipate it properly on the Vitality side. Looks like spawn. they want to get right into it. I think it's going to be some early aggression towards B. And then just set up towards A once again. They're not touching the bomb early. They just want to find some picks. And they've completely left mid alone. There's no presence in towards mid. And that's going to allow space for Keto to get forward and realize what's happened. If he works his way all the way around and finds the bomb, this would be a catastrophe. I think Speedy might flash him in as well. He, might, he doesn't technically need one in this situation. But you can see there's a man in this area. Apex doesn't have the info. Keto takes his head off, makes him pay. Bold. And they're going to have one man fall back while Keto sticks to his position. So Vitality down a man early. That was maybe a little bit too bold from Apex. Swings into the position. He's still swapping his gun out. Doesn't anticipate the top of mid play. Now Keto's in such a good still spot. Still here. Do they clear this? If they don't clear this, this round's over. Doesn't look like they're going to. Oh, they're going to turn his back. And there's a second He's man patient. here. Huge play by Keto. Grabs a double. Sprout needed it. And he converts. Nice quick shot there by Searson. It's going to be NBK left all alone. What a round. They just rolled right into the play Keto wanted to make. They were they were the, the little dancing monkey, and he was turning the organ grinder, and they danced exactly to his tune. So that worked out beautifully. NBK is now alone in a 1v4. He's going to bail actually the off. I don't think they want the triple up, but good to get rid of it. Prevent it from being it's a good problem. good practice. You know, you just got to make sure. Uh, maybe the other op wasn't retrievable. It's, it's, it's good policy. Searson will silence him with one of those ops still remaining on the server. And so it is going to be a 10th round for Sprout, and what a way to get the round as well. They just had no chance to respond in mid. He just really played him like a fiddle in that situation. Uh, he lets the first guy go by. Clearly had some sort of sound cue that there was a second man coming up as well. Dismisses the one up close, then able to grab the second player as well. And uh, Keto comes up with a triple kill in that round. He's one away from being in a one-to-one -one ratio. So Sprout, that was a big round for them because... Vitality had run a significant amount of rounds in a row, and they're finally able to respond. And it looks like they get aggressive in towards Cat. They have the Auper. Ooh, look at Keto getting all the way up by the smoke. Is he going to push here? Alex likely to take him down. He's actually burning. Put it in reverse, Alex. This is interesting. We saw some very bold plays from Alex in the first half. On the other side, this time Keto's reading him, though. The edge of the smoke is played beautifully. Zaiwu tagged a little bit, but he gets the answer shot, and that's what's important. Still, a man disadvantage in the top of mid being flashed to oblivion means he's just going to go ahead and fade away, waiting for this underpass play from Mark K, but nobody's left at home. Fortunately for MBK, he's worked his way into dark, catches one off the back of it. But Searson will not allow him the chance to get more. RPK close up. This could be deadly. He reads the shot, and he doesn't even need to reveal Zai himself. Because Zaiwu hits it instead. Faven plays right into his hand. Zaiwu was waiting for that exact play, and this is going to be a bomb plant. And Mirbit trying to get back in from the periphery to make something of this round. Yeah, Mirbit. This might just be a save. Long distance right now. He does have a kid to work with. The bomb was just planted, so he has a little bit of time to make a decision here, but doesn't look like he's going for it. Although he's, okay, so he's going into that general area. There's an AK he can pick up if he wants to, but that would give away a sound cue. So I think he might be going for this, Mike. Gonna be going in towards connector, and I think it's just whether or not he finds a, a quick pick, but I don't, I don't think he's committed to this now. Oh, time's too far gone. He's got to get out of there. He's gonna go ahead and withdraw. 
Not even picking up the AK. Yeah, it's maybe surprising. some stuff salvageable towards the top of mid, but it's going to be the conservative play once again. And Mirabit's going to keep up some utility. Okay, maybe playing for the off. That's what he's playing for right now. Goes ahead, gets it. No one's able to punish. So the AWP found. That's a nice party favor for sure. Didn't want to make the audio cue early on, so he was patient, and the patience pays off. So nicely done for Mirabit to get that for his squad and keep up utility as well. So a lot of economic boon from that play. The problem is uh, they need more than economy. They need rounds, Mitch. Yep, and we're going to have a quick timeout, I believe, here. My assumption that's on the Sprout side. But uh, they're going to be able to buy up here. They did snag that all, but everybody else had some money to go around. Searson will have some money left over. But right now, Vitality up two rounds, 12 to 10, and they're in good shape. So right now you can see Searson at a... Uh, 107 ADR, that's fantastic. He's actually pretty significantly ahead of everybody else. NBK, I think, is the closest with 86. And then uh, Alex on 81. So, yeah, Alex has had a heck of a map out uh, here so far. He's leading the way for his team. But, uh, yeah, Searson really keeping them in this one on the side of Sprout. Zaiwu so getting back into it in the second half as well, which is, is good to see. Much more of an impact. And we'll see if he can continue that. He does have the AWP once again. Is looking for this aggressive top mid play. But Searson is calling his number. And Searson has been such a threat. Drops down to check underpass, actually. So Searson has given up this angle. And this is interesting. He, he's advancing forward. Searson, this could be huge. It's also so very dangerous. Oh. And Apex is right on top of him, waiting for it. So that's Searson's silence. That's a big piece off the board early on. And Vitality now feeling very good about round number 23. That's a really risky position with an AWP in that situation. Yeah, sure, you can get that quick pick. But then, like, either way you go, you're trapped. Or most likely it's trapped. Tough. One guy watching from mid. He did have a support player in towards Cat from Keto. But nonetheless, I mean, you miss that first shot. There's no way you're getting out of there if you miss that shot. And uh, Apex doesn't even let him get one off. So now this is tough. It's looking like we're just going to have a straight B hit, which is not something we've seen a lot of this game from either side. There's been a lot of subterfuge in, in, towards, uh, in towards mid and then leading into A hits. And this looks like it's just going to be Mirbit getting his number called right on the B-bomb site. Support can come through from Catwalk, but there'll be smokes and utility to cover it off. And so onwards, they charge. Keto has gotten through that, though. He is here to try and have some impact. And Mirbit sliding forward. That was bold. He's blind as a bat. He can't find the shots. Keto will get two. Looked like he might have been good for a third, but that quickly gets shut down. The bombs actually advanced beyond the site. Apex has to be a little bit careful not to get caught out, not to get overexposed. But it's looking like it might just be a save call out from Speedy and Faven. So it will be the round for Vitality and Sprout. They missed the opportunity to try and get back in. Yeah, waving the white flag pretty early. I think pretty much even before the bomb went down, it look, they, looks like they had made up their mind. So Faven waiting for that push up towards Cat, trying to get an exit kill in this situation, but there's no real way they can retake this. So Vitality's going to have 13 rounds, be up three, making it 13 to 10. And they're looking much, much better than the first half of this matchup. But you can see Sprout is going to try to hold on to this double op setup. They have both of them right now. You can see one man is kind of chasing an NBK. But he's going to stick around with his teammates in towards those B apartments. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to spot out any on, anybody on Sprout. So Vitality get another round, 13 to 10. They're getting closer and closer to making this 2 well. Can Sprout bring themselves back in? Those are the eyes of a trained killer right the there. The tank. The tank himself. His uh, his treads are well oiled. Yeah, that was He's up ready close to roll uh, through here. personal right there. We got really we want to see the pores. Yeah, we want to see the pores in that shot. Thirteen to ten now, and this would be the 2-0, folks. This is Sprout's map pick after such a slog on overpass, after such a good game out from Sprout. We were hoping to see a little bit more from the Mirage, but it seems like they're running out of steam. And now an early -split. cat play. They're moving on towards the B split, and there's a lot of CT presence towards this catwalk. They've got to hold on, but they've lost the first kill. Mirbit has to be the bastion for his team on the site, but he's losing support from around him. Oh, Searson coming in to help out. Mirbit does go down, but Searson caught out in the open right now. Can he make an adjustment to get out of here? And the answer is no. Zai Wu legs him up and finishes him off with a P250. Why not get the last kill? And that's another round for Vitality. They are one away from map point, two away from being in Pro League, Mike. 
Two away from Pro League. Vitality, currently the HLTV rated second best team in the world. Which is wild to think that they're in this match right now. You it, know? it is a little wild to think. They certainly are feeling like Pro League is their destiny. Like that's where they belong. It's the form they've been showing recently. And this looks like it's going to be the realization of that form. Still, Sprout has the double up here. They would like to play spoiler. They would like to ruin that ni nice, neat storyline and insert one of their own. That's going to be Zaiwu. Early on, Searson coming into the angle. Zaiwu doesn't read it. Searson has the first, but Apex is there for the trade. Apex, careful, loses his life. Can't quite line up the spray. Doesn't have the health for the fight. And now it's going to be a man advantage for Sprout as they do attempt to run this spoiler play. Yeah, there's a quick rotate player in towards Cat as well as one in towards Market right now. You can see Mirbit watching that cross. And Speedy gets away. Kido gonna try to make up for it over towards Cat, and NBK wins that fight. I thought Kido had him dead to rights, but NBK wins it. So we're evened up 3v3 RPK, trying to get in towards mid, in towards connector. There's a man right by him in towards window, but a minute on the clock and 3v3. It's a pretty good setup for Sprout, though. They've got the off up in. Towards the window, now working its way jungle. But this, this is careful. There's going to be a boost up. He has to read it. Speedy has to anticipate this. And if he doesn't, RPK could be the thorn in his side. Could be the fatal flaw here, especially as they adjust towards what looks to be a B take. 30 seconds to play, but they're just working the bomb in towards apartments now. It's going to be up to Mirbit on the site. Speedy works his way out. RPK's position works exactly as intended. Nicely done now. Mirbit cannot miss, and that's unfortunately that. one right there. They're going to wrap on him. He gets not another opportunity. The bomb will be planted. It's just Faven who's got to save, and this is going to be map point for Vitality. What a struggle for Sprout now, not even able to keep that gun alive. RPK shows no mercy. And now five rounds in a row will be required of Sprout to get back onto this. Yep, one round from Pro League. Vitality can taste it right now. So close. But Sprout, for them to get back into this, they got to run five rounds in a row. And it's been a struggle for them on the CT side. But they still have a little bit more CS to be played. You can see the buy here for them. Not that great. Two umps of FAMASA scout. And actually two FAMASAs. Little light on utility. They got a good amount on Mirbit, but here we go. Searson starts it off well, gets the kill with the scout. Speedy going to be the next man up, but no, make it Faven. He takes down Alex. Zywu gets flashed up. That was perfect timing on that peak. It's going to be Apex finally responding here, Mike. But here comes Keto, grabs one, make it a double for him. He's traded out by Zywu, and it's madness in towards mid. Madness indeed. Now Zywu is trying to sort out what has just occurred. He's only got 30 HP and he's looking for a quick frag to try and bring this back, make it a little more possible. Sprout coming at them with everything they've got and they're making it work. Zywu has found the first though and he's looking to make the hero play to shut this all down right now. Sprout meanwhile wrapping around him. Faven is getting aggressive, not content to sit on his laurels. He's wrapping up. And Zaiwu may not expect this. They've switched positions. He's not looking the right direction. The smoke has now faded. Faven realizes there's nobody here. And that's the blindside shot. No chance. Patience shown. And the patience results in a round. That was messy, but it works out for Sprout. And they found a little bit of life. Four more to go. Yeah, clinging to life right now. They, did, they were able to grab that one round. But as you mentioned, four to go here. And... Vitality just need to get one to get over that hump. Zaiwu still going to be on that op. AKs across the board for Vitality on everybody else. Let's see if Sprout can continue this map. Searson going to get the jump up. Watch for that cross on towards Cat. I don't think he's going to get it anytime soon. So you can see it looks like a fast push in towards B Apartments to at least get that map control. It doesn't look like they're going to commit to it just yet, but they do have some utility for a fake in this situation if they want to. Oh, oh speedy, speedy with the scout. Don't do him like that. Rips a quick headshot, and that was huge as well. That would have been a strong position for Apex if he had worked his way out. But the anticipation is there for Speedy, and he shots it right down. Now mid is close for business. Alex is backing away from this, wants nothing to do with it, and a man advantage available for Sprout as Vitality starts to group back up and figure out which direction they want to move. This becomes tough. If you're Vitality, it looks like they're going to group up for just a straight A hit. Simplify things. Don't, don't think yourself. Just go for the hit onto the site and try and make it happen. But we still got the scout and the rifle of Faven tucked in towards the site to make this happen. And quick rotations could be on. Problem is there's no one to take this direct engagement. There's no op available for the early pick as they move out. 
And so Vitality might just get the walk on. They're not throwing utility yet. Now it'll come over. And they've got so much space as well. That player out towards Ticket Booth is stuck. Faven can't get out. Speedy's trying to buy him a little bit of room, but has to be careful not to overcommit himself. The take is on. They're moving forward. The French side grabbing map control by the gobs. Oh, this is so ballsy holding on to that flash for so long. Doesn't quite go where he wanted it to, but still the space is good. No kills yet. It's all silence on the Western Front, and RPK will break the ceasefire. MBK follows it up, a quick pair of frags, and they haven't left themselves much time, but it may just be all the time they need. Alex was coming for the flank, but it didn't matter because Zaibu had the shot early, and the bomb will now be planted with just enough time to spare, and Faven can't hold on. So 16 to 11, it is going to be Vitality taking map two, confirming their victory in the series, and confirming their spot in Pro League. Ladies and gentlemen, Vitality is your first Pro League team. They have done it. It felt almost inevitable coming into the series, but Sprout certainly put up a fight. They came out swinging. They made an absolute game of this. Ultimately, Vitality was just a little bit too much to deal with. Yeah, even though that was a 2-0, I was really impressed with a lot of Sprout's play. There's a, a lot of highlight reel plays, and just a, as a team, they, the, both of those maps, they started off really well, but Vitality's basically just caught up to them. Maybe you learn a little bit of their tendencies and leverage that, but nonetheless, I mean, Sprout should be pretty proud about the play that they had against the number two team in the world. Let's not forget that. So, um, you know, obviously they lose. They're not going to be in Pro League for the time being, but Vitality will make it. Congratulations to them. Big deal for them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great way to start it off, Mike. Reminder, folks, though, for Sprout, there is definitely another opportunity. They will be able to play relegation for another shot in. They just don't get the, the quote-unquote, easy pass. It wasn't yep. an easy pass by any means trying to come up against the number two team in the world. But they're not done yet. And with that form, if they bring that form into the relegation tournament, keep an eye on them. They may just surprise. And there's, of course, more CS to be played this weekend because after we get these finals out of the way, we are going to be having the Global Challenge happening. To break down what happened here, what we just saw, we've got Mark and the squad. Take it away, man. Well, you know, they did end up doing much better on overpass than we expected, but not able to take the win. I, I think that was a compelling game. I feel like pretty much everything we kind of speculated as to the win conditions of Vitality and how Sprout could have made a dent pretty much came to life. We got the 2-0, sure, um, but there was a moment there where Vitality was sweating. We said they were slow to build into games and to tournaments generally. We saw that. They, they did not look like they were going to be winning that at all. It looked like Sprout had the upper hand. Um, we really didn't see much from many of the key names in Vitality. It goes to overtime as well. The amount of clutches that were thrown away on the Vitality side, like they lost a two versus five uh, to actually take it to overtime. Uh, there were so many dicey moments there. Pretty much everything we built up in terms of their flaws and how they give rounds away kind of came into fruition. But they got the job done. They're in Pro League now. I guess that's enough at this point. Like, they, they, they did enough, but I was so happy what Sprout brought to the table. Like, they, they, should have, they had a really decent series now. now. I mean, Jamie, you were watching pretty closely. You took yeah. extensive notes. Is there anything in particular that standed out from both maps? I mean, I, I was kind of disappointed with the pace of, of, of Vitality more than anything else, just because of, of the way they sort of handled themselves. Like, it would look like very, 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 very confident from Sprout in the beginning. And then by the end of the, uh, by the, end of the game, it would eventually turn up, you know, Zai Wu and co stepping up and actually pushing some decent numbers. But there was one point in the second map where he was, where Zai Wu himself was like 0-5 on round yeah, eight. Yeah, he finished know? the first half with seven kills um, on Mirage. That, that, and he had zero, um, zero clutches. RPK had zero multi-frags in that half. Like, it was all going, all sorts of wrong for them. But second half, they did pull it up and like, Zai Wu finished in the 20s. It all came together in the end. It was just that they, that, performance is about what I expected. Considering the variables we had going into this one, the fact that the jet lag, their tournament drop off in form, I felt like that's about what I expected, but it was enough, you know, like they had to win that series, a must win for them, and they got it. It wasn't the prettiest performance. I'm not gonna take that much away from the form or what they'd lead to the future, but it was enough for today, and that's all that really matters, I suppose. I will say though that despite the uh, issues that we've had with Vitality, I do actually really like how, how Sprout played themselves, yep. you know, like Keto and, and Farvin had, some, had a really great series, you know, some um, incredible numbers posted by Keto in that first map especially, and yep. that was the key thing as well. I mean, I was speaking to the manager again during the break, and he was saying, yeah, like, you know, Keto and Father, when they're on form, and Sprout are a very deadly team. I think they've proven that with this series. I, I've never thought to Sprout as having much firepower in general. I've never kind of considered that. Wow, they've got some great players. We always took a team like, they might be able to take a map off someone. But this team, like, this has potential right now. They've got some really skilled players within it. And that just goes back to the original conversation we had about this team potentially um, being kind of in a, a deadly position where they could lose some of those star players. Like Keto coming in here, he's a great player. Sirison as well, his AWP looks electric. He was posting 15 kills in the first half. He was like deep 20s as well towards the end. He was, he was keeping them on a lead. Like he almost, he almost had, a, had enough in him to keep that game going. And this is a team that was a work in progress. They've been yeah. built over the last 
you know, year, six months, uh, constantly making changes, tweaking, working with the roster to make it as good as it could possibly be. Uh, a lot of these guys we saw play with some of the teams that were stronger in the past in the German scene, like Euronics, uh, who was at one point in time, like this really great German team, but it all just fell apart. And a lot of those guys ended up here. Some of these guys come in from alternate attacks. Some of them are just puggers, and that's just what they do. They just pug it out, and then they end up getting onto a roster like Keto. So, I mean, I'd say there's some silver lining right now for Sprout. Like, I didn't think they were going to do this well. I wouldn't have even given them the, the season that they had. I think they were like 13 and 4. They finished in second place in Europe, I believe. They, they just took Vitality. Like, they had them on the ropes on overpass, right? They, they had them in overtime. They probably should have won. They probably should have won it, definitely. But in terms of, like, the context of this game, Vitality, the position they are in Counter-Strike right now, compared to where Sprouts are, this was a great success for Sprout, I think. The fact you had a decent showing and you showed the world you could actually apply pressure, you've got strategy and firepower now, I think that's promising. Like, sure, they're not in uh, Pro League just yet. I don't think they're quite ready for that, in my opinion. I feel like they're getting in a position to be so. Like, they can still have a chance within August, I think, the next relegations period's played. Um, but, like, they're a hard-working team. We, we talked about their preparation coming into this and the amount of notes they had. Sure, they'll be disappointed with that. They, I spoke to them outside. They were like, we're going to win Mirage, by the way. We're, like, we're taking it. They got confidence in their own ability. Uh, they felt they could have taken it, and I feel like they could have done as well. But the convincing first half they had, shouldn't have really been allowed to come back into it considering the scoreline like switching over to the tea side as well but either way it was uh it was a fun game to watch and that's what that's what we kind of wanted right we just wanted it to be a decent competitive game yeah. we didn't get the blowout on even map and that's for me is about as good as it gets that's a team that should be in pro league and it was a great game good series and there you go sprout looking decent and that's a great mentality as well and a great result for them to post going into the relegations as well because they still have a second chance obviously um and i do agree with you that they're probably not pro league material but there's still that possibility that they might make it through and if they post a good performance like that against some of the other teams i think is entirely possible that they make it in next season. Well, we talked about all these high-profile plays. We can pull up the replays here in just a second as well so we can see some of those plays. I, I mean, I was definitely pleasantly surprised by the way that Sprout played throughout the series. It, and there's a chance that this was a 2-0 for them. Absolutely. The, the thing is I like, they, they, they didn't play KG. They, they didn't sit back in default. They were happy to take CT aggressive duels as well. And they got AK-47 to hand and we saw Keita just there. It was absolutely mind-blowing. Sirison, we said coming into this one as well, he has a lot of all potential, a lot of hype around him right now. He doesn't necessarily have to play in a German team. His skill is there to play in the international squad. Like, Orpers at that caliber are few and far between. He looks very good. I love this. Yeah, like this is like so many great little moves. You sort of mean about the, the preparation, the theory they've brought into the game. That's why they were so confident going into this series. They, they thought they had a real shot to take this. And I actually asked uh, asked them backstage uh, during what, in between the maps about how they tried to anti-strat the guys yeah. over on Vitality. And they actually told me that they didn't do much anti-stratting themselves. They just have like a solid playbook of their own strats. And wow. They kind of just approach things and make slight adjustments and slight variations and bring different tactics to the table depending on the team I, I that think they have that's, av available. That's the best way to do it. If you're trying to just rely on anti-stratting a team to win, like that's not sustainable, right? You can't bring that forward. Forward. It doesn't really progress the team anywhere. But if you're aware of their tendencies and you can make it work with the, the deep playbook you do have and you can make adjustments and um, change things around, that's the best way to operate a Counter-Strike team. So they've got some great foundations here in Sprout. Um, unfortunately, didn't able to win this game, but still, they, they showed themselves to be a strong team. We had some great, but this, is, this had me on the edge of my seat. I thought, oh, he, yeah, I thought he screwed this one up. When he let two people go by, I was like, the first shot wasn't clean. That first spray was not clean at all. Like, arguably doesn't deserve the second kill, but still managed to pull it off. He had a great game and he turned a lot of heads here. So many great moments and uh, remember he comes from a pug background like probably his first professional team right and he's posting good numbers against one of the world's best right now so that's great to see some of those inexperienced players get this kind of showing at a big event like this and uh, actually kind of surprised me I was actually enjoying the game like I didn't think I would I thought Vitality honestly would blow them out of the water but that was actually pretty quite good I mean, the truth is, if this was maybe any other opponent, they could have probably have walked into Pro League yeah. with a big victory. Instead, they play against an opponent who's not only on the rise, but very much risen. Yeah, it's the unfortunate for Sprout. Like, Vitality are not MDL sort of team, right? They, the thing is that they were six months ago, but yes. now they, they've had such a meteoric rise, it's difficult to even say, oh, it, why, if you're a new viewer, like, why is one of the world's best it's, teams it's like that Fury. just played like, the grand final Cologne, yeah. why are they in MDL? It's because their trajectory has been, their hard work has been so efficient, they've managed to get themselves in this great position here, and it's just unfortunate for Sprout, who against any, anyone else in the MDL would probably come out on top of the looks of things, but it's just one of those things, and they'll have to keep grinding and uh, hopefully make it through relegation. Now, Anything you guys want to say before we wrap things up? Um, I just want to say it was a great game. I look forward to casting the next one. I'm going to give it everything I've got, and I hope you enjoy it. 
Backstage, Henry, you look more alert than ever, and I think Dude. it's because you were crushing one of these. I was indeed. I had an ice cold. You were even pouring it into a cup and sipping I, I it. I wanted like... to make it. I made it like a slushy. I wanted to make it the best tasting experience I possibly could. So I put it through there, and it was it was delicious. It was. Uh, I felt energized. I felt kind of hydrated, and it was delicious as well. It was a great package. I would really recommend the charged berry blast. And if you didn't drink it all, it has a resealable lid. That is a, that's a great kidding. point. That's one of the Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. It's victory in a can. So absolutely. Definitely try and check it out. It's available, I believe, at Walmart. You can go pick it up. Every worldwide. Yeah, and you definitely want to go get some. We are going to throw things to a break before we jump into our next best of three, and you can see them setting up behind us. It's going to be Singularity and Furia to see who's going to be moving on into the North American Pro League. We'll be back in just a bit with more of the MDL Global Challenge. Stay tuned.